It's time for Random Lore Dump with me, Zero Daylight. Hey, everybody. So um, let's start with a little bit of a recap. I'm not going to go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, we now have a YouTube channel. We've got some text summaries that are really easy to get ca caught up with on uh, World Anvil. Uh, so let's just go back to the prior episode. So um, we started with the party having just entered the etheric uh, by means of some very experimental technology. And they found themselves in what was effectively a strange forest, and they saw weird, distorted visions of each other that might or might not reveal some of the truth about the characters. Uh, and then they realized that the jungle that they were standing in was actually SJ, who'd grown to be several miles long. So they were kind of I don't, wouldn't say enjoying, but they were experiencing this kind of strange interstitial space that was etheric transit when something appeared to try to rip the box with Denny's body and the mysterious stone in it away from them. Uh, they were able to hold on to the box long enough for Mirth to open it up and grab this mysterious stone that they've carried with them that immediately began to glow and pulse with an amber light as if it was a heart, beating heart of radiance. Uh, after some failed wisdom saves, um, their transit through the etheric was uh, interrupted as they were ejected forcibly, only to find themselves uh, laying in the middle of a road somewhere. Uh, they were able to deduce that they were um, indeed on the road to Alternest, uh, so, and were able to figure out the right direction to go. Uh, but we're going to have to hoof it. So... Um, at the end of their first night, making their way towards Aldress, they ran into a kindly old man who hadn't seen anyone in years and just wanted to have a friendly conversation with some strangers. And he had a story he wanted to tell them uh, about a queen who used to live in the forest, who changed people and bound them to her will forever and granted them power in return for their loyalty Oh, and also punish those who defied her will, uh, at which point a crown of light appeared upon his head, uh, and he summoned some very nasty creatures uh, who began to attempt to kill the party, uh, successfully killed, well, successfully knocked Blaze completely unconscious, uh, did a decent amount of damage to lots of other people. I think Mirth, oh, poor Mirth, took one point of damage the entire time. But it's very clear that the man uh, was not a man. He was some sort of elf or other ancient fey creature who really wanted Mirth to give him the stone. Uh, but the party prevailed. They killed him. Um, and then they got a wagon out of the deal, so it wasn't so bad. Uh, as they made their way, uh, they finally arrived at the gates of Aldernest, only to be accosted by some guards who had a very reasonable request. It's like, hey, you're coming in our town. Let's take a look at your goods, and that way you can pay the appropriate fees like every other place in the world. Well, our party got very unruly at the suggestion uh, and were probably minutes away from coming to blows with uh, a very large number of town guards when suddenly they were interrupted by a very filthy but flamboyant man uh, and his 20 or so um, cohorts armed with cudgels and shivs uh, who basically chased off the guards. Uh, the man introduced himself as Lord Mayor Athros Darvell uh, and proceeded to charm slash flirt with the party uh, and escort them into town for free and uh, invited them to join him at Eight Bells uh, that evening uh, for dinner, uh, because one of them, you know, here's what happens. So the entire party is on a quest to do a thing, to the, to potentially save the world. And of course, the first thing they do when they hit a random NPC is ask them if they have any jobs for them. Well, it turns out Athros Darvel might have some jobs for them. Uh, so they now have the option of meeting with him this evening. Uh, they made their way finally, finally, finally to the Eudoxia Society's chapter house, uh, they met a lovely half-elven person who was apparently Khan's beloved, which Khan didn't speak about the entire time, uh, and were escorted to a well-appointed reading room 
uh, to wait while Khan kind of filled in members of the society, and eventually they'll be introduced. Uh, so we left the party plotting how to rob the place blind and steal all their weird experimental technology, because that also can't possibly go wrong. So let's see, maybe they'll blow up the entire town, or maybe they will find a way again to weave between competing uh, priorities and advance the story forward. So stay tuned. <laughs> 